Hi, I'm John Singer with the Armstrong Hot Water Group, and today we'll be showing you a video on the disassembly and reassembly of the Brain DRV80 mixing valve. Um, as you can see here, we do have a Brain in line with our fluorite temp water heater. Uh, to service this valve in line as it lays, uh, we'd first turn off the recirculation pump and then isolate all inlets and outlets, including the cold water inlet, the hot water inlet, and the mixed water outlet. Today we'll be showing you how to disassemble and reassemble the valve on a bench. Okay, so we got the DRV80 valve uh, out of the pipework and we have it here on our bench. Uh, the first thing that we'll want to do is take the cover off and then remove the PC board. So you want to remove all of the screws. I've uh, reduced these down to two for ease. There's a total of eight with your Phillips head screwdriver. When you remove the cover, you'll want to be careful of the wires from the LCD display. You want to pull on this plug by the plug, not the wires. Remove the cover and place it somewhere dry if a valve is still in line. You do not want to get it wet. Uh, the next thing we'll want to do is remove all of the plugs from the PC board. We'll start with the thermistor loom. Also, pull by the plug, not the wires. You want to remove the battery housing. You want to remove the motor plug and also remove the power supply. You'll need a small flathead screwdriver to do this. Remove the circuit board and place it in a location where it cannot get wet. Next, we'll want to remove the screw that secures the power supply to the battery housing, as well as the total of four screws that secure the battery housing to the main body of the valve. Two on this side and two on the other side. Now that we've removed all four screws from the battery housing, we'll take it off and place it over to the side. Next we'll want to remove the thermistors, which are located here, here, and here. Now there is pressure behind these thermistors, so you'll want to make absolute sure that your system has been completely isolated before removing these. Next, remove the thermistors by pulling on the metal portion. Do not pull on the wires. Next, use a small flathead screwdriver and remove the O-rings that seal off the th thermistors. Next, remove the four screws that secure the stepper motor to the drive mechanism. Remove the stepper motor and place it somewhere where it cannot get wet. Next, remove the encoder ring by using a two millimeter Allen wrench. Remove the drive mechanism by unscrewing the six screws that secure the drive mechanism to the body of the valve. Once the last screw is removed, give it a slight twist and then use a flathead screwdriver to make a slight wedge in order to assist the removal of the drive mechanism. Remove the lock nut on the drive mechanism with a 5 16 bit. This will remove the drive mechanism from the spool. Next, we'll remove the drive mechanism completely by removing these four screws, then pushing the drive mechanism completely out the top through the bottom. Remove the disc, and then from the top, push out the drive mechanism. After the drive mechanism is removed, 
Look for any signs of water damage along the shaft of the drive mechanism. Any water damage will indicate that one of the seals have failed and those will need to be replaced immediately. To access the seals of the drive mechanism, loosen the top nut and remove the o-ring and inspect it for dryness or lack of lubrication. Replace it if necessary. To access the lower seals, uh, put the drive mechanism into a vise and loosen the lower nut to access the lower two seals. For reassembly, make sure that all seals are covered with a good silicone based lubricant. Uh, replace all the O seals that you have removed. Retighten the top nut on the drive mechanism. Reinsert the drive mechanism. Replace the disc along with the four screws that secure it to the drive mechanism. Next, place the spool back on top of the drive mechanism. And using the 5 sixteenths bit, put the nut back on and make sure it is very tight. The spool should be allowed to rotate around the axis, but it should not wobble. Next, insert the drive mechanism back into the body of the valve. Make sure that all the O seals are covered with silicone based lubricant. Push it in until it snaps into place. Then replace the six screws that secure the drive mechanism to the body of the valve. Reattach the motor and make sure that the wires end up on this side of the valve because that's where the connection on the PC board will be for the motor connection. We don't want to pinch these wires, they're very important. Next, secure the motor to the drive mechanism with the four screws. Reinsert the thermistors. First place the uh, O-ring over the thermistor using a good silicone based lubricant. Then reinsert the thermistors. The, the blue wire goes into the cold inlet. The gray wire goes into the hot inlet. And the long thermistor goes into the outlet. Then reinsert the washers along with the screws. Next, we'll attach the battery housing to the body of the valve. Using the four screws that tighten them to the body. Next, we'll rotate around and make sure that we secure the power supply to the body of the valve with that one screw. Next, we'll reinstall the circuit board. You want to make sure that the power supply runs along the side, and that the thermistor wires are clear of any screw holes that might pinch them.
Okay, reconnect the power supply with your white wire going to the positive 12 volts, the black wire going to zero. Reconnect your motor plug. Reconnect your thermistor loom. Then reconnect the battery backup. Finally, we'll reattach our LCD display. And then reattach the cover using the eight screws. And that concludes the disassembly and reassembly of the Brain DRV-80 mixing valve.